Hello, Tillman. How are you doing? I think you are muted. Mm -hmm. um, just getting here all the stuff ready. Great. Um, so I need this camera and then I need to move this down. Um, okay. Great. Um, no audio on this one. I, I, I just, um, yeah, yeah, I'm bit, let, let's just try and then I say hello. So hello anyway. Um, but <laughs> Don't worry, take your time. I'm going to disconnect my camera for five minutes. You have five minutes to prepare. I will. No, no, no. I, I think I I will. It, I will just now want to share my uh, content. Perfect. I just want to make sure that it works the way I want it to work. That's that's um, so now I would like okay, you're seeing them perfectly. Yeah, okay, so now I'm more relaxed. Okay, okay perfect. Thank you. <laughs> now it's the way I want to have it. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> How are you doing? Okay. I, I, I'm well. I'm fine. Well, you know, these days uh, it, it goes up and down, but um, soon we'll be we'll be going on holiday. So nice, good. nice, yes. and it seems to work. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's great. That's great. So, have people been vaccinated already there? Or um, yes, we we um, yes, I think we. My family, we are all vaccine, double vaccinated now. And I think the whole team is also either about or is doubly vaccinated. Okay, uh, that makes a big change, yes? Um, my yeah, big, yeah. big difference, yes. It's a yes. bit more relaxed, yes. Yes, that's and on great. your side, how are things on your side? Good. Well, we got basic vaccinated like um, end of April, beginning of May. Um, university opened all the policies early july i mean well early june we already were very they, they have very relaxing policies but early july no masks needed in buildings everything back to normal okay. um the students will come in august in person with requirement of vaccination proof to enter campus though um but um yeah i mean things seems to be very going very nicely under hopefully smoothly for the semester we are all looking forward to have our meetings back in person and well group meetings already started to be in person because they're not big groups uh, but um yeah so i yes hopefully um hopefully things continue that way and you don't have we don't have to go back to prior policies and yes yes yeah yes that's um yeah same here yeah great <laughs> great great i mean you had a fantastic session of speakers in demo i was sharing that session and it's really impressive all the work done there i mean even with pandemic seems that it was not affected too much yeah, we, we could work uh, through, well, we had a few weeks last year where we could not work and then we worked in smaller teams. Great, I see. So, so it was well, okay. It, it's of course, yeah, not the same thing, but. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. I mean, but, but very, very nice. I mean, I, I mean, even in the under complicated conditions, it's great that, that there was a lot of progress. Yes, or you can yes. uh, externally you can see a lot of progress mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. great so i we have already 33 people i'm going to wait one or two more minutes and we start um yes so you will see that lately it has been a lot of discussion that's great so um, students will I will tell them to, I mean, at some time they were posting questions in the chat, but sometimes it's not that productive. It's, it's better if they they raise their voice up and and and, and, and interrupt. Sometimes it's better. 
Eh, but um, feel free also uh, team to control. I mean, if there, you think that it's better to stop and 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 discuss the topic later. I mean, you feel free. Uh, yes, I will. Um, I will try my best to mm -hmm. interact with you all. <laughs> <laughs> and and please, yes, use the chat or raise your voice. And um, I, I will have soon anyway, very soon questions to you. That that's what we will start with. So so there are. That's um, great. Yes. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So great, great. Yeah. So um, you were in the past summer school, yes or not? Like the one that no, was no, 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 we not, not. not even one. The one and with the famous T-shirt, um, the Joy Division Disorder T-shirt. I see. Okay. There was okay. one. Yes, and there's a. Well, I was when I was young a fan of I the see. nice Joy Division <laughs> band, so. When I, I saw this T-shirt, I think um, Thierry Diamarchi, he had this T-shirt. I was always a bit jealous. So. I see, I see. <laughs> yeah, yes. And unfortunately, this time we will not make a T-shirt, but but we, we owe you one. We owe you one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. So I think let me start. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our third day of the second week of Boulder Summer School. Uh, today we have a great lecturer, great speaker, Tilman Eslinger from ETH. Um, Tilman has done fantastic work with Ultracolatum since the beginning, since everything started. Uh, Tilman has been a very pioneer and influential in the field. Um, this time he's going to tell us more about his cavity system and, uh, oh no, sorry, I mean, oh, I mean yeah. a mix of both, yes, both. So I and now I see it's locate engineering with optical lattice. So I will let you, uh, him telling you what is he covering. By the way, lectures have been uploaded in the Boulder Summer School site. So uh, you can, uh, you will find them there. You go there, uh, uh, Daphne has already done that. So um, I think that's a good idea for you to follow. And with that, I let uh, Tillman um, continue and start the lecture. Thank you, Tillman. Okay, Th thanks, uh, very Anna Maria. Um, I well, I, I got the title Floquet Engineering and a Floquet and uh, Synthetic uh, uh, States, and and then I thought both is too much, so I reduced to Floquet. And since it's a lecture, I I thought well, in the lecture one has to do also some some hard stuff. So it, it it's not only. Uh, just experiment, so it will be quite a bit uh, of, of theory. It was for me also a good opportunity to go uh, through all that. So uh, uh, let's try to look at all the Floquet uh, physics uh, from an experimental uh, physicist, physicist perspective. And uh, I mean, those who may be interested in the cavity physics, there was recently a lecture in um, Oh, where was it? It was in at an Indian uh, a school in India, and and that is also recorded. So, um, so also I thought that it makes maybe sense to talk about something else here. And what I would like uh, to start with, um, I mean, may, maybe just to tell you. So I have uploaded. I think there should be uploaded lecture notes, but these lecture notes are still kind of half empty. So when I do the lecture, um, then I will fill in and, and you can also uh, do the same. You, you will also get the complete one afterwards. So it, it just as, as you wish uh, to do. Um, for me, uh, the starting point is, well, the, 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 it will be about the system and what you can do with a system of this sort, which is kind of a laser field, which is retroreflected. And your mirror is not only shaking from some vibrations, <laughs> residual vibrations, but you deliberately maybe put it on a on a on a piezo and then you drive uh, the uh, the piezo and which will lead to a, a, a shaken uh, laser field. And, and a lot of things one can do. 
with that, a, a lot of uh, quantum simulation, different systems you can engineer. But my, uh, the way I would like to start this lecture is to ask you what you associate with this system. What, what are your associations? Um, what type of physics can happen? What can we expect? What are the energy scales? Whatever. Because I think that's important um, uh, to then maybe see what has to be in this uh, in, in the theory. I mean, what type of ingredients uh, do you expect when uh, looking at the formalism? And okay, they are there, they are already. So the chat is going very good. Yeah, sorry. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say like uh, time average potentials is one of the first things I think of. Yes, absolutely. You, you, one would uh, expect uh, some time averaged uh, potential. Yes, very good. So, so let me, let's see how do I do that best. I add here a page, add a page and I write down and then we can a bit later on compare what I was associating. So, okay, time averaged potential. Yes. Um, further thoughts? Um, on top of that, I would expect like micro motion. That is micro motion, yes. Um, coming from, from, from where, I mean, what would be there your thought? Why? Yes, it's of course correct. Um, well, just At because. Which frequency, maybe, or frequencies, or how? Yeah. Um, I guess the frequency with which you're driving the system. Um, yes. So there would be, yeah, one would expect the driving frequency, maybe higher harmonics. Yes. Um, yes. And, and yeah, what, what can one further, further thoughts? Heating. Ah, yes. Heating, heating. Absolutely. Um, uh, why or what are the thoughts on the heating? Heating yep. from the driving, right? Heating from the driving. And, and if you were to think of uh, the process that can happen, uh, what, what is the more precise process? I can absolutely, for me, it would also be the association. I, I, I shake something, it will heat up. Mm -hmm. You have like competing energy scales of like the, the allowed harmonic oscillator states of the lattice versus the, the frequency at which you shake. I'm guessing that's one of the competing mm -hmm. energy scales. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so I will not write down everything because you see, or, or, or in, in, you will see it in, in, in the chat and, and you hear it. Um, in the chat, there's also optomechanical coupling between light mirror or light and trapped atoms, yes. And um, if you think now a bit more in addition along the line of, of lattices, like band engineering or band mixing? Band engineering and band mixing, absolutely. And, and if you think, um, and, and uh, that's of course one in, important thing we'll come to. Uh, and if you think of uh, the energy scales, which energy scales would you um, expect to be relevant in, in, in an experiment which is along the lines that- Gap uh, size? Sorry, gap size. Is it? Is it a... Yeah, yeah. The 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 band gap. Yeah, I, yeah. I would also expect yeah the the, the band gap uh, to play a, a important role as compared to which energy scale? The drive strength, maybe. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the frequency the frequency of drive. Fre the 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 free the driving uh, frequency. Yes, it's, so there there should be something. Where yes, the, if if the band gap is the driving frequency, well, I guess something should happen. Yeah. In the chat, somebody also mentioned uh, tunneling. I think uh, that's tunneling, another yes. relevant energy skill. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, so so that's in in the end, it's yeah, it's it's a band band width 
Um, that, that's also, of course, a very important energy scale. And what could also be um, an energy scale which might be relevant, which is not obvious from the picture there, is maybe more of obvious from my own Hubbard background. <laughs> Interaction. Interactions, yes, uh, there, there could be something like on-site interactions and then the drive could be uh, uh, on the same energy scale as, for example, interactions. So, so uh, that is uh, some physics. So, so maybe I, I, I remove this first. Uh, <laughs> some stuff is coming up. Um, so, uh, okay, so, Sarah, it was the, the most kind of simple thing there is uh, that is the shaking potential and uh well the energy scales that we had just discussed and what do you make of of this of this phase shall we ignore it or 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 maybe not or what does that mean, actually, this phase? So I, I, I write down here kind of uh, the, the position of the center position of, of the lattice, or as written here, and I shape that. And, and now, in general, of course, I write a phase in. And, and in which way can one think about whether that plays a role or? Maybe it's not important because it depends on the initial time. Or oh, different initial time give different. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. So 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 one will and and I think one can also and then may, may, maybe Anna <laughs> can can tell me whether she also thinks in in the in that way. I mean, if my states uh, or in the whole, I mean, in the whole system, in this driven system, the the states um, are also periodically evolving, and. And since my system is also periodically driving, and the phases are always important in, in the physics systems when you have two, two oscillators. And in a way, I have the driving oscillator and I have my states which are oscillating. And then it, it plays an important role. That's, and, and in the other cases, we, we can often uh, ignore it, but here we can, cannot ignore it. Um, time average micromotion. Ah, yeah, that was there. Okay, let's see what. Um, okay, let's see what did I put down there. Um, um, periodic in time. Okay, that's a bit banal. What I wrote down there. Switching on, switching off. That's a bit the discussion uh, we had on uh, when do you switch something on and off, and 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 what role does this phase play. Um, and then eigenstates or whatever it is may oscillate in time, um, and then suitable. Yeah, that ah, that that is also that that's something one may may wonder what is a, a suitable uh, frame of reference. Um, wh whether I should go into frame which is shaking with the lattice or some oscillating uh, reference frame. So that's also I think something one can think of. And then, okay, let, let's see. I mean, there was already this, um, uh, you mentioned uh, this multi, well, the coupling of the bands. And I guess one way, and, and the heating, one way to look at it is that if I have a, a, a mirror, a shaking mirror, I will create frequency side bands. And then if, say my band structure, my main band structure is shown here, then I can have processes. Well, this should be the blue, a uh, blue and red is interchange. So, it, it's, um, so, so you go up with one frequency and then you go down with a lower frequency. So this should really be red. Let me change this. Um, I should have asked you what's wrong in the picture. <laughs> so you have some band structure, and now you suddenly can drive other transitions. 
So, so and, and that you will see that thereby, of course, you can now even have, you can imagine that you have multi-photon transitions to even higher, uh, higher bands. And then the whole band structure picture uh, is no longer as simple. So it's a bit like, you know, as, as a quantum optics person, um, I, I, well, I like atoms as long as they are two level systems, if they get a bit more, mm -hmm. and in molecules, I mean, we all were taught by our, our Charlo that a molecule is one atom too many. Um, but we, of course, at the same time, over the years, we have realized that additional complexity and also in molecules, they, they can enrich the physics very much. Um, and uh, in particular, cold, cold molecules, uh, uh, I think uh, a lot of things uh, can be done. Uh, and with these driven lattices, it's a bit the, the mo molecule version of an optical lattice. So, um, okay. And then here, heating, that's uh, an important point uh, you, you, you have mentioned. And then uh, what else? Ah, okay, yes, that, yeah, what else? May, maybe someone has, uh, uh, yes, let's try again, what else? So if we think a bit beyond the scheme that I've shown you, what, what could, could come in? Some sort of yeah, sure. Since you're coupling within like a macroscopic mirror and a laser field, I expect a lot of noise. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, it's, it's always good things that I haven't thought of, but I agree, yes. Some like spontaneous breaking of the time symmetry. And then... uh, yes, and, and uh, yeah, spontaneous break or breaking of the time symmetry, how could that be done? Like some different period emerges in the system just different from the oscillation mm -hmm. frequency, something like that. Mm -hmm. And if you, um, well, I, 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 I think that they are very close to what I had been thinking, but with what else there is, of course, uh, many things and, and uh, I hope many more because there, I think still one can do a lot of experiments on, on driven systems. Well, I, I was thinking about simply about more complicated waveforms. So e.g. Two, two frequencies, well, the noise is many uh, frequencies. And then, uh, for example, th there it pops up again, if you have two commensurate frequencies, there, there will also be a relative phase between them. And you can also imagine that you can uh, interfere several lattices and have different drives. And again, there will be uh, uh, phases uh, between uh, these systems. And also, well, you could also think about things like amplitude modulation. Okay, so, so after this uh, little bit of brainstorming, let's have a look at, um, at uh, early experiments. And uh, and there, in these early experiments, um, well, we, we, we at an early point, we did some experiment, but we were not thinking about Floquet physics at all. So our uh, thoughts were much simpler. Um, that was when we were doing Hubbard physics. And in Hubbard physics, you have an energy scale U. And then we thought, well, when you modulate a system, maybe you can get to this energy scale U. Well, one thing was in the first experiment, you tilt the lattice, but um, well, another way is that you drive a system and maybe you can excite uh, that. And the easiest way um, uh, was uh, to drive the amplitude of the lattice. And, and that, uh, uh, that brought us uh, a spectrum uh, where we could excite uh, uh, the Hubble view. Here, here's an, an example where we change the modulation frequency, different lattice steps, and uh, you could see, for example, uh, the peaks um, in the Hubble spectrum. Then um, there was uh, another early experiment, and that was in Ennio Arimondo's group. 
and they they did the 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 real thing in the blockade well in the the shaking uh business um what they did um is they did actually this what i showed you early the uh, the shaking so they had a standing wave and a mirror and they were shaking it and what they were all able um uh, to observe there is that the tunneling matrix element or, or the, in the bandwidths uh, that that behaves like a Bessel function and that you can engineer the tunneling uh, by shaking the lattice and here you see that it, it behaves like uh, the square uh, of a well the absolute value of a Bessel function and that was also here here's an early proposal paper so those uh, two papers they kind of started and then as it is often then things yeah go on a little bit not not too much and then suddenly uh, everyone is excited again so that's uh, happening often um, optical tweezers are also an, an example so. okay and here i put down some literature but only a little bit i mean uh, really you have then for more literature i ask you to look at 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 the um uh, different uh, reviews. I mean, there, there is really uh, 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 too much. I also would like here to thank uh, for the lecture notes that uh, Konrad Fiban, uh, he, he gave a lecture in, in my quantum gas lecture, so that I will uh, give you. And then also uh, I enjoyed rereading the PhD thesis of uh, Frederick Görg. Okay. Um, and of course, there are many experimental groups uh, doing work, doing excellent work. Um, and again, in the reviews, you, you'll find this, um, uh, the references. Okay, so so let's uh, let's let's start with the uh, tougher. I hope. Okay, that you will bear with me. Okay, so so I might, yeah. I hope that I have not deleted too much that we de de um, take uh, too much time. But uh, let let's look at the time periodic uh, problem. So basically, we have a situation where we have a, a wave function and where we well have a, a, a Schrödinger equation, and now but with a situation that we have a time dependent uh, Hamiltonian, a time periodic Hamiltonian. Okay. And so, and now we, the, the, the basic idea is that we write, um, well, we write now the evolution operator, and then we want to construct uh, a simple state, kind of eigenstates uh, of the system or quasi eigenstates. Okay, let's let's see. Uh, look at the evolution of our state now in in um, the evolu time evolution of our initial state by looking at this um, time operator. Okay, so let's uh, write that down. T, we, we start at some initial time, and then we have, uh, this is time ordering, time ordering. And we evolve. To the final time with the operator. D tau. Okay, and also the U will also be uh, periodic in time. And it can also, in a, a way you can look at it, um, uh, it, it, it can be factorized. So you might have an evolution from t0 to time t1 plus t tau, and then you can write it as 
going to T1. Well, you in a way you go from the right hand side, you go from T1 to T0, from T0 to T1. And then um, from, from T1, whoops, from T1 to T T1 plus T0. Okay. And in for the periodic evolution, if you have a periodic evolution, you can write it as. So if you evolve, you evolve now from T0 to N plus T. And that is the same as if you evolve from T0 plus T. And that uh, to the power of N. OK, and um, your operator, your unitary operator, you can now write in the following form. When you start, I mean, so this is uh, the periodic uh, time evolution as minus H F. And here now, this T zero is, is important um, that it's the time um, where we put the time stamp for our periodic evolution, okay? Divided uh, by h bar. And so, Tillman, you are assuming a time independent Hamiltonian during that period of time, tau t? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, this, um, so, so this Hamiltonian, so this one is now. Um, um, the, the, we, we write this now in a, this T0 is only the time stamp. So that's not as a function of time. This is, um, one could index it differently. So here it's indexed by, um, it's an index. They, the, these brackets are an index. The index for our tau zero. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a bit tricky whether to, to write it always or not to, to write it. Okay. And then, um, so this is now um, this, this stroboscopic Hamiltonian. Okay, Hamiltonian. And which depends on depends on depends on choice of our T zero. Okay. And this this is exactly uh, meant with these brackets. Okay, and this is also, um, well, he here again uh, uh, in this picture, uh, there you can see. So if I choose different uh, T0s, uh, then I get, get a different uh, uh, evolution. Okay, I need a different H. So my, 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 my Floke Hamiltonian, that will depend on my choice of T0. Um, but they are all related uh, to each other. And this uh, you can write in this form. Again, you have your time evolution um, here, and you can transform one to the other. by time evolving, kind of shifting your um, HF. Okay, but whilst the spectrum, the, the spectrum of it is uh, unaffect, unaffected. Okay, one, one can also read it in the following way, the evolution, um, this periodic evolution, I have 
an initial so well i have to show here okay i have this initial ev evolution and here i have the evolution of full periods okay and i can write that down that i have u of my initial time from my initial time to t0 then i have n times my periodic evolution and again here this this uh, square brackets uh, tau is is um is my time stamp not a time dependency and here you have tf so that is tau f is kind of my my final well it's a small f my final time and uh and it's kind of after my periods i have a little bit to go uh again um in in my not where, where i can't fit in full periods anymore so that's um well in a way in in, in this picture you you see uh, most of it because i can now i might now be able to to shift this t0 then this yellow might be a bit longer and the red might be a bit shorter um uh, that's um in this evolution okay and now we can define well now we have to be to do a little more uh, uh, algebra on these uh, operators and uh, the, the goal finally will be that we get into a form where all the the time dependency uh, or the uh, all the gauge choice or the the choice of our t0 goes into the operator into what's called the kick operator so that that is uh, where the initial evolution or the the choice of my reference frame or my my t0 is cho chosen for me it's always a bit where i choose in a in a in a run ramsey clock uh where i choose my period in in, in this or, or my precise starting point in a Ramsey in a Ramsey uh, experiment okay um so let's write that down um this what is called the kick operator that can be written as the time evolution between t and, uh, and t0 and t and i h f with the time step stamp t0 t minus t0 divided by h bar and it this so that's the definition of the our kick operator and this kick operator is again periodic in t And it's at stroboscopic times, it is uh, zero. So if we have if we start at t0 then and n times or plus n times then we again have zero okay and now we can write in terms of the kick operator our general evolution uh, operator so so then we are in a in a position we we, we can take our state and uh, we can evolve it in time in this case 
our the time evolution uh, the, where we have an, a time independent function um, or time independent Floquet operator uh, that is sandwiched between our two uh, kick operators. Okay, so we have U, T, F, T, I, and that is E to minus I. Here again, I write this gauge choice explicitly. Later on, we can leave it away. And and this kick operator that is now a, a, a time dependent. That's a, a, that, they're the time. That's uh, the TF is a time de time dependency. Oops. So the idea being um, that you have here the evolution with your time independent operator, and now you have to adjust at the beginning and the end uh, with for the uh, phase choice. Okay, and there is one more way how one can uh, write it. Um, that is that all the phase choice uh, goes into the kick uh, operator. And then uh, you can write it kind of in a, in a gauge independent form. But you need, of course, if you then uh, uh, want to calculate something, you, you, you still need, um, well, you need to know your, your kick operator. So not, not all, all problems are uh, gone. OK. Um, here, the, yes, as it's written down here, that you absorb the gauge dependent terms in the kick operator, and you do that, um, or that reads in the following way that you have your effective Hamiltonian, which is one of the, a pos one of the possible uh, 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 Floquet um, uh, 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 Hamiltonians. Okay, and then uh, you can define this new uh, kick operators. Which is uh, given by the K. E2 minus K tau zero. Okay, and, and now um, that's already written down there is uh, this Floquet uh, theorem in, in its gauge independent uh, form. So uh, how should we read it? Okay, here that is, okay, we, we come with our, our state, we come with our initial uh, state, we transform into the effective, into effective frame. Then we evolve under our, uh, our simple, um, well, in, in a way our effective Hamiltonian, where we will see how we can, can get that. And we evolve under that, under, Effective Hamiltonian. And uh, then we transform uh, back, transform back um, in, into uh, 
the initial frame and here we have the dependence on the micro motion we, we get a dependence on micro motion final time tf depends of course uh it, it the, the final time is is where it is in the period of the micro motion i mean we, we have a system which is uh, driven in time and we stop at some point and uh, depending on where we are that needs still uh, to be taken into account uh, dependence on micro motion final time tf within period tau period t okay and um well you can write it also in in the uh in in the differential form okay so um now let's uh, look at the flow case states and quasi energy so so let's evolve uh, let's look at the evolution within one one period so the u of t0 plus t and starting well and starting with at t0 and this is now with our flow k or it could be the the um uh, effective Hamiltonian. and then you you get eigenvalues or well it it's called flow k multipliers um which are well which have multi-valued eigen energies so because i mean the it it doesn't matter um well you have a a, a whole um range of uh, eigen energies which give you the same flow key multiplier you know in a way um because the system uh, runs periodically over time you 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 cannot decide when it had started it will not um that's not determined okay and then you have hf n and and from your flow k or your effective hamiltonian you get uh, eigen energies and again here these states and these or oh, these eigen states is um they they really are again depend from on our choice really depend on really i should write that it's depending on the gauge choice and the en are defined modulo h bar omega so that's the, the, the driving frequency with omega equals 2 pi over t okay and now we will uh, look at uh, initial uh, look at an initial state and uh, expand in an in an eigen basis. And I will also, I mean, well, we, there, there is still some of um, these calculations, but what I had thought, what I do is that at some point, well, I bring some experimental kind of view on, on lattice systems, and then um, we go along with um, this theory, brief theory introduction, and then uh, it will meet uh, the experimental introduction um, so and I thought that even though initially uh, one could think okay I go through these things until uh, we are 
at lattices, but then I thought that that might be too long because thinking of you guys behind uh, the screens, <laughs> then <laughs> it's um, then then I thought I I put. Uh, a bit earlier, the, the first round uh, of experiments, and, and that will come soon, uh, but not quite yet. Okay, so let's um, do a bit uh, more on, on these eigenstates. And if we have the Floke eigenstates, uh, then, we'll, then, we, then we will do that. Okay, so let's expand an initial state in uh, uh, the above uh, basis. Okay, so psi of T zero equals some N, and that is our, well, the psi T zero, well, and well, we are just expanding in that basis. And well, this is our, our, our ANs, which are uh, time independent. And well, we can write it in this way. And then we can evolve a, a state in time in our uh, uh, floppy basis. Okay, so that's what we still need to do here, psi of tau equals u tau tau zero, psi tau zero. And we plug everything in from above. Again, we, we write it explicitly with our uh, tau zero reference. And We, well, I'm not jumping now, I, I write it. Now we can put in the, the eigenspectrum of uh, HF. And now we can write it minus the end okay so what we end up is that we well this is uh, the Kind of result that we have here, we can now uh, expand in time independent coefficients. And we just have to know uh, our Floquet modes. Okay. And here, okay, and, and the, the Floquet modes we get out of our kick operators and the states, um, well, are written here, down here. Okay, and now I want to... Um, here. The, the Floquet modes, is that, is that equivalent to the micro motion? Because these kick operators have uh, the kick operator, uh, they, they the kick operator that, that, that has uh, uh, the micro motion. So, um the in intuitively um 
you see, you have the system which is uh, periodically driven, and then you will also have uh, kind of uh, uh, states which respond to this periodically driven kind of, or uh, are in this naturally periodically driven basis. And now, now we have to think in terms of these naturally uh, driven states. And, and that's, yeah. And, and there you, you can also see that, that there, there can be states which, uh, which are oscillating uh, with different frequencies. That, that's where this uh, 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 T0 uh, comes in. And uh, one will also nicely see in, um, in the energy spectrum uh, of a band structure, um, the, the one that I had in the beginning, there you can also think in a way in terms of dress states, uh, because what you can do in the Floquet systems, if, if I have a band structure, and now I can uh, have two photon transitions. And, and then I have a difference photon. And now I can say, okay, I can create states which have n or n minus one difference photons or n minus two of these difference photons. And um, similar as in a, in a Jane's Cummings ladder, when I'm high at n, when I'm not at uh, the simple nice one where I start with vacuum and then I have uh, one or two photons and I create my uh, Jane's Cummings uh, state or my vacuum Rabi splitting, if I now go to a large high, high N, then um, it doesn't matter whether my photon field uh, has one more or less uh, uh, photon. It only, only when I'm at, at the vacuum, when I start there, then it plays a role. Um, similar, I mean, in a way, this stress states, one, one, one could, uh, well, uh, in, in the, this uh, Dali Bar paper, 1985, very nice uh, paper on uh, dress uh, dipole force revisited. There they looked at the James Cummings model, went to high numbers uh, of photons, and then uh, and then into the semi-classical, and not starting with it. And there you also have uh, this ladder. Uh, where you go up and down uh, in energy is very similar to, to, to this uh, in the Floquet picture. But it, I, I must admit it is a bit uh, of a struggle, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there are people who have a super intuitive uh, picture uh, in a way that one looks at the system, say some driven system, and then um, um, see uh, what must happen uh, or what the role is um, of the uh, a, What, 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 uh, so, um, I mean, for example, I mean, to, to, to develop uh, different Hamiltonians, well, they, they, you, you, there are some simple, well, for, for me, I would say there are some simple ingredients where, where, you, where you can look, okay, if I have two paths to go to the same state, and then I have effectively in interfer two interfering paths, then I have a relative phase, and then I get uh, non-trivial phases. In, in the Floquet, often it's then that I have not just two, kind of it gets to, to many, many paths, but I still can, 
can have the simplified picture of uh, of having uh, two paths because but I still have to take into account uh, the, the higher orders more, more like a, a multi path interference. That's um, how I um, I look at that. Of course, la later on, I mean, you, you can often write down as a effective Hamiltonian and then the world is nice again. Uh, the, the, you, you have an effective Hamiltonian, you can say, okay, I just take those orders and then uh, I look at my system uh, there. But uh, in a lot of cases, if you want to prepare your state, then that's too too simple. It, uh, if you want to get into a certain Floquet state, for example. And, 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 and so what is missing? So my understanding when you write the effective Hamiltonian, you are writing in powers of one over omega, the time average, one over omega, and higher order terms when you construct your effective Hamiltonian. So, but you are saying that this kind of is missing the appropriate phase factor, phase factor, or what is missing in this effective picture that um 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 the the um if if you want to if you want to understand how you uh, get into a, a certain floque state then um um then the 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 the, the picture why you have to drive this uh, phase or how you have to switch on your um uh, your your drive be because there somehow you make a choice you need to get into a certain uh, uh state a certain initial state or you, you want to start from a static one and then you drive into the into the um into the driven state and yeah and or when you or to to interpret of course if you if you see a micro motion in your system that is of course uh, it will not be covered uh, mm -hmm. by the the effective mm -hmm. yes so maybe i can compute kind of observables but i don't necessarily can identify the appropriate state so i can and i'm up to the order that i want to so i have to go to higher orders if i want to include higher powers of one over omega Yes. Yeah. And or, or also, I mean, also to, to see, say, one, one can, um, uh, if you have, well, if, if you have gauge fields, uh, then uh, sometimes, well, one, one, one uh, could say, ah, okay, I can gauge this away. But the, the question is, when can you actually ga gauge um, uh, uh, your oscillation away and, and uh, again there it is if you have two paths um, or when you drive at two different points in space you need to drive with two different phases on a, on a certain lattice for example then you will enclose, enclose uh, uh, a non-zero flux um, however, if you do it uh, symmetrically, you might first think, ah, okay, I have a nice, uh, I have my nice, um, um, my, my, my nice complex tunneling matrix element, uh, but that, that uh, will not, uh, yeah, that, that I can gauge away. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, so before we, uh, go to this um, high frequency expansion and then so a bit earlier than initially planned so we planned it here a reminder of lattice physics we'll do it now okay so we'll do some um, physics of lattices somewhere a bit more uh, uh, yeah, physics system in the lab. Um, and the question in lattices, one might wonder where, where is actually uh, the, the physics in, in such systems? And I mean, if you wanted to describe someone 
in very general terms, uh, what type of physics do we look at and how, how does it manifest? We have this gas in a optic lattice, so in standing wave potential. And then what type of physics can I expect? Now, very general, now uh, before having uh, any flow case system, we will see where the flow case system will uh, play a role. So what, and, and this goes now again to uh, the audience. So, so where would you say is the physics and what, in, in very general terms, what would one expect could be a system? How could a system be different from another system? I mean, in the end, we put a gas in this standing wave, but um, we see quite different manifestations. Two first things that jump to mind for me are um, the block theorem and band structure. The band structure, absolutely. So, um, um, so the band structure, I, I will on the next or one of the next slides, I will put it as T as um, uh, the kinetic energy of the system. Um, yes, and yes, but but one can and. They are also with the band structure, one could uh, ask uh, the question, how could in general terms, the system be different with different band structures? What, what can actually, what can a band structure uh, in, in an observable, what can it change? The uh, difference between bosonic and fermionic lattices, absolutely. Uh, and there again, what would you, um, which, um, if you think of a gas, really, <laughs> of, of a property of a gas, and then um, the difference between bosons and fermions, what could that be a Pauli exclusion principle, single side symmetries? Yes, that's all uh, correct. We are very much, I mean, the quantum optics, atomic physicists are thinking very uh, microscopically. You lose uh, momentum and instead you get lattice momentum. Yes. And if you think in terms of variables like, or, or properties like compressibility, Yeah, localized versus uh, non-localized states, yes. It, I mean, uh, for example, I mean, with the Pauli uh, exclusion principle and the field band, uh, spin waves, yes, one, one could say, okay, some, some states might be uh, compressible, uh, other states might not be uh, compressible. So I have, in a way, I can... Uh, see the physics in uh, density or density fluctuations, superfluid versus mod insulator is again, is a typical example of, of, of that because you have a compressible state and a non-compressible uh, state. And um, uh, similar in, in, of course, in a band insulator, it, it's also non-compressible or more, um, yeah, for example, yes, a, a band insulator, mod insulator, yes. And then spin, yeah, spin waves, I would also say, yes, you, you one has the physics of that, the, the spin can arrange themselves. So um, uh, you can have spin fluctuations, spin correlations. So, so how the spins arrange themselves or how uh, the, the, well, the density ar arranged it's in, in the sense that you have uh, density uh, fluctuations. And is there more? Anyone? I'm, I'm, I'm running out of, uh, of this type of descriptions, I must admit, but, but maybe there is more. at least which I would cover with, with this type of picture.
I could think of, of course, all sorts of, yeah, please. There's optical properties, mechanical properties. Yeah, optical properties. Yes, optical properties. Yes, I should have thought of that. Yes, absolutely. Optical properties are, are very nice because you could uh, say that each atom is a scatterer of light and, uh, and dependent on the position of the scatterer of light, um, it, it, um, well, it might, there, there, there might, there are interference effects. It might only scatter forwards or only, um, uh, might do Bragg scattering. That's absolutely true. Um, or even more basically, like what color is it? What? Uh, what? In in which sense? What color? Yeah, I agree, of course, because I have the frequency. Mm -hmm. And further thoughts? Could there be some form of conductivity slash pumping? Some sort of sorry, thing? acoustically, I have difficulties. Oh, sorry, you. some form of pumping or conductivity, which like motion of particles. Yeah, yes, I mean, a, a, a transport would be another, yes, a transport uh, would be another, and, and okay, pump, pumping, when one could think of topological pumps and, and, and things like that, that's Probably, if one puts it more general, that would be some functionality that you put uh, into the system, which maybe from the yeah this ground state, so one would distinguish between ground state properties and and uh, functionalities. Yes. Okay. Unless we have another suggestion, I I, I would um, move forward. So okay, so so that that is uh, in a way I, I one can look at it in uh, in the, the many body Hamiltonian of these parts of kinetic energy interaction and the trapping potential. Okay, and and as had been mentioned, um, uh, the, um, uh, the the lattice gives the rise to a band structure, and we will look at well. Uh, one, one, one can create Dirac points and whatnot. And also one can uh, create topologically non-trivial uh, band structures. And uh, that's where uh, also uh, Fluke engineering comes in and uh, where one can uh, create band structures, for example, which, which have only a, a single Dirac point or have uh, two uh, uh, Dirac points uh, with the same uh, Barry curvature. And the U, okay, the, the U, um, uh, that is the usual Hubbard U, which probably had in already in, in, in lectures. And when that's strong enough, it might, you might get a mod insulating phase, or um, if you have exchange energy, uh, which is uh, larger than your fluctuations, you can get uh, uh, antiferromagnetic states. And trap, I mean, he, here I just uh, uh, mentioned the simple harmonic trap. There are, of course, box traps and, and also uh, the transport experiments. Uh, there there is, a, is a lot. And that's, okay, that is just a picture <laughs> how it looks like or how it looks like uh, uh, in, in our a system. Um, um, sometimes in, in talks I say, okay, the, um, w w when now, now I, I have that one and then so now let's have a look at, at uh, a Fermi Hubbard Hamiltonian and then I, I show that picture. <laughs> because in a way in, in, in the atoms you, you create uh, uh, the Hamiltonian or at least um, uh, you have an energy band, a very well separated energy band where your system is almost uh, uh, the Hamiltonian. The, the system that you create is really described extremely well within this energy band uh, by uh, the Hamiltonian, which is very rare I think in, in physics that, that one has complex Hamiltonians which are so identical to, to what is produced in, in the experiments. And 
I mean, on the, on, the, on a general note, I think uh, there they are in 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 science the the description of what is a model system is not uh, is varies hugely between different uh, or what is a model uh, varies hugely between uh, between uh, different branches of science so so you can have a, uh, in in quantum optics it's super precise here in many body physics with synthetic system is very precise uh, but then when you go uh, to descriptions already in, in um, um, solid state physics, what is a model might be a description that, that seems to uh, predict or give, it would be fairly predictive. But then you can go in, into uh, biology or ch chemistry is already uh, a bit further away. But it's interesting, always the same word model, y yet the meaning what it is is uh, is very different. Uh, we expect it always to be super precise. In other uh, disciplines, it's not, and that can lead to to misunderstandings. Okay, um, but here uh, now let's briefly look at at what you can measure on those systems. Uh, one uh, very simple uh, thing that you can measure uh, is that you uh, let your system you switch off uh, your your trapping potential you uh, in in the case of uh, lattice system you may adiabatically uh, ramp down your lattice and then the system the the atoms uh, uh, expand and you see funny enough you see these square uh, kind of uh, cubes uh, coming out so one might wonder why why is uh, uh, such a cube uh, coming out of um, of my system? So so I have my my trap gas. I, I let it expand. Well, I switch off adiabatically, and then I get uh, such a cube. What what could be uh, the reason why? Well, I can also, I mean, there are, it's a bit more than a cube. It has these additional features here at the side, but it could just be the inner part, which is uh, the, the, the cube. So is that obvious or? The Brillouin zone, isn't it? Sorry? It's the Brillouin zone. Yes, yes. So it, it, the, the reason, um, in a way is that the the quasi momentum distribution in the lattice if you uh, adiabatically switch off is mapped on the real momentum distribution so you slowly close uh, 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 the, the band gaps so if you suddenly switch off the lattice then you immediately uh, project on the free momentum states. If you adiabatically switch off, the, 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 the assumption is that you do not have uh, a change in quasi-momentum distribution. So you, you look in the pictures at your quasi-momentum distribution um, because you assume that it's no, not um, being uh, disturbed during switch off. Whilst if you suddenly switch off, uh, then you look at uh, uh, the real you project onto the real momentum states and you might see um, well for a uh, uh, Bose gas you see uh, peaks in the structure um, and then what we will also look at um, um, are different uh, lattice structures and in particular also at uh, uh, structures uh, uh, like a graphene and uh, uh, the, 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 these first proposals for, for graphene, they, they were always uh, take a 60 degree laser beams and so on, but, but that um, is of course not so easy as you had seen earlier in, the, uh, in this picture of the experiment. I mean, they are, uh, <laughs> they are, they are they, the entrances, you, you see this metal box and that has at uh, entrance at 90 degrees 
and uh, it takes probably well to build such an experiment takes two years or so at least and 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 you cannot just put 60 degrees in um yet one, one should not be too frustrated because if you think of this structure um uh, you, you you do not change much when you kind of uh, uh, uh stretch it in one direction and that looks really like a brick uh, structure and there you know, one is much more optimistic that one can create such a thing <laughs> such a structure so in in a, in a, uh, in a, in such an experiment and the way uh one does uh, one does it is is uh, shown here and that is that you overlay two optical lattices and so you have the the normal lattices that one is um, used to which give the lower potential uh, on lower on the right that would be the x bar beam plus the y beam so that is when you create these optical lattices you actually uh, make sure that you have some frequency difference say of uh, 50 megahertz or so it's so a difference in frequency which doesn't matter well which will not couple to your atomic system and then you have two individual standing waves yet you can do it differently you can also have so that's the, the red y beam and the red x beam um, that you have them at the same frequency but once you have them at the same frequency um what, what, what is the what is a uh, what is the problem there where, where where do you run into uh, or what do you have to take care of so you have a, a two-dimensional lattice as uh, shown there but now it's just the red x and the red y beam um, what do you have to take care of if you if you set that up i mean i can tell you if you set that up and if you don't think and then you put a bose gas in and um and and repeat your experiment and you will see uh, every other time uh, you see a different interference pattern in the relative phase of the two layers yes you 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 have a a time phase uh, between uh, those two uh, two beams, and depending on this time phase, you would get the upper or the lower picture there on on the right hand side, or or something in between. So this time phase uh, uh, changes, and and it's kind of uh, yeah, it uh, your your interfering you in in one case you have interferences of photons coming say uh, you, you well it's a question whether you have processes two photon processes where a photon from below is scattered to the right whether you drive this process or whether you don't drive this process so so if if you only drive processes absorption emission in long, uh, along one direction or the other direction um, then um, that's uh, uh, like a phase shift of uh, uh, pi half and then you get the lower uh, picture however if you also drive um, photo uh, transitions absorption from below emission uh, say to the right uh, then then you get uh, the upper picture and now you can make it even more complicated by adding uh, this additional uh, what's called x bar beam and there you have also a choice now an additional choice and that is uh, where you position uh, the maxima of your standing wave relative uh, to the red one so because i mean you have your mirror 
and then say you have similar frequency, but then say it's 50 centimeters away, um, then depending on your frequencies, your minima and maxima uh, will be at a, at a different place. And you have a certain choice. Oops. Okay, this uh, formula is not <laughs> complete. There is exactly missing the, the, the phi. So this Vx bar, um, cosine kx, uh, the phi, you can uh, position this standing wave relative uh, to the other one. So in effect, you could kind of cancel out one of uh, the potentials. And now uh, you can exactly go to this position and then play with the relative intensities. And if you do so, uh, just by changing the intensity, you get all uh, these different uh, uh, lattice structures. Uh, just by changing one intensity. In particular, what you also get is a uh, honeycomb uh, lattice structure as, uh, well, in the lower row, uh, in the middle, uh, it is uh, shown. And, um, well, there, there is the, um, um, the band structure shown. And, um, Maybe here uh, uh, there's this thanks to uh, Dario Poletti and Corinna Collat, and that's uh, sometimes how uh, in, in, in science uh, actually it works, because this lattice structure, this overlaying here, uh, the idea uh, was um, to use this flexibility of this lattice structure uh, to create uh, an antiferromagnet. Uh, however, when we showed our ideas and thoughts um, to Dario Poletti and Corinna Collat, um, they said, ah, okay, this brick wall structure, that's exactly in the way we think as uh, theorists about uh, graphene structures, and that has Dirac points and so forth. At that time, of course, we, we were not thinking of Dirac points in our work. We were thinking of um, uh, uh, antiferromagnets. We, we, we did come back to the antiferromagnets, but at that point, we didn't think of, of that. And uh, uh, that's, yeah, often happened. So we had the techno tech technology there, um, but uh, one needs uh, the exchange. Okay. So um, this was the first round of interlude uh, on the, the lattices. And um, yes, I'm uh, open. Uh, well, yeah, we have yes. still. We uh, have five minutes uh, for um, maybe it would be great to have questions and discussion now. If you want, if the students have any question, that's the best time to, to ask. Yes, yes, just, um, yeah, just start. Go ahead, Seren. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, um, so my question is, um, I'm, I'm curious, when you like um, set up your optical lattice, uh, are you like plugging this in in the computer to solve for the Vanier functions and then use those to determine the tunneling and the uh, interaction in terms of uh, the... Yeah, 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 one has to, yes, that's... Um, in some cases, that's a non-trivial uh, endeavor to calculate the right Vanier functions. And there are codes around. Um, I'm just trying, I was just trying to remember the, the name of the person. Um, yes, um, well, you can come back to me and then I will uh, uh, remember. Um, yes, it, it, it is non-trivial and one needs... Um, uh, theorists and uh, who know numerics. That's and uh, yeah. But that's the way to go. Basically, you try to get the one-year functions. Yes, exactly, exactly. If if you want to do a very precise comparison with uh, between experiment and theory, uh, yes, you need the one-year functions. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Some more. Questions? 
or suggestions. Um, so I think I will be shorter on on theory um, uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Such a suggestion from what I hear. Um, so could you just clarify um, with the setup for the with the three beams? Um, yes. Like if you were just like but like I guess before you're trying to have these like different flexible lattices, is the structure to have only the y and the x bar beam, or like if or do you always use all three? Ah, okay. So the the two structures. Okay, they okay. Let, let let's. And uh, there, there are uh, two ways one can look at it. Um, I can look at, I have my X and Y, and then I have a relative phase between X and Y. And then I can change, and, and, and there I can uh, already change a structure. But then I can say, okay, I put a bit more say intensity in y and that um uh, and and then i get uh or uh, i i look at it that my underlying structure there is a structure between x bar and y or if i only have x bar and y i get the, the lower structure that that that's also a way one can look at it but i think um the 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 a, a good way to to see for example why should i get uh, dirac points one, one could wonder why do i get dirac points in this uh, system and uh, the way one can think of of it is that the y and the x beam they create some band structure so I mean, you, I mean, they they, they produce some uh, interference pattern, and then they uh, produce a band structure. And now, what you need from your X bar beam is that um, it does not change the eigenstates at a, at a certain point in your uh, in your uh, Brillouin zone. That it does not so that it has. Uh, the same symmetry that it doesn't change the eigenstate, but that it couples differently to the eigenstates. And then that means that one eigenstate goes up and another one goes down. Uh, but they still remain the eigenstates, but you can now move them up and down and then you get a crossing. And that's the way how one can and uh, uh, see why there must be uh, uh, Dirac points uh, uh, must pop up if you add the X bar beam, which is must be. I mean, it only pops up if it's exactly uh, shifted uh, uh, by ninety degrees or, or uh, uh, relative uh, to the X beam, because then you have this point where where you can uh, change uh, move. Your eigenstates up and down, up and down, without adding an additional coupling. That's the way how we can look at it. Okay, excellent. So, Seren, one last question because I think we need to move to the poster presentation. So, one quick question. Yeah. So this is a quick follow up on my previous question. Can I assume, like, um, can I assume in this, let's say, this two D optical lattice that my ground state is Gaussian? My ground, sorry, grounds like uh, one year state is Gaussian, and just do all the calculations based on that, like calculate the tunneling and interaction. Um, it depends on if you're very deep. It might be an acceptable uh, mm -hmm. approximation, but it's um, uh, it, it will not be. Uh, vigorous, precise right? and sufficient okay. so yeah it's yeah the, if you okay. want to get the right you and so on it, i think for intuition well i think in terms of <laughs> of Gaussian state but but to get uh it quantitatively right uh i i, I then it's it's uh, not uh, possible okay. Great. If we don't have more questions, I say let's thank Tillman for the great lecture. 
and then we have a five minute break and then we go and listen for the advertisements of the poster for today. Tillman, thank you so much. Okay. And we see you tomorrow, yes? Yes, it's two hours later tomorrow. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Uh, yes, tomorrow it's exactly, it's at 11. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. exactly. <laughs> okay, so I wish you all a good day and see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank Bye. Thank you, Tillman. Thank you, beautiful. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. So, Leo, should I turn off the Zoom or leave the Zoom on? Um, what should I do? Um, I think uh, we're taking, how long of a break are we taking? Five minutes.